Okay, so I want to do a little mini reading, mostly out of gratitude. I had a great night last night with myself. That was amazing. Um, I had a lot of fun all this week. August was really nice to me. September is looking like it's going to be even sweeter. Um, and I was gifted these cards. I was gifted this beautiful Rider Waite deck. And I have like a weird relationship with a Rider Waite deck. This is the second one that I've been gifted um, and that I really love. So typically I would not buy this like the plaid pattern for a backing and interestingly enough my godmom has the exact same deck. <clears throat> so I don't know. Anyway, anyway, I did some community work yesterday and the day before and when I do community work I get messages. Um, I don't like to share collective messages because I don't think things are really that wide all the time. What I will say is that what I've been feeling for the month of September, for those of us that are doing our devotional work and looking to anchor in more pleasurable moments, more small moments of joy, looking to anchor in that kind of like miracle current, that there is a focus on, I want to say like opulence, but what is opulence to you and what is opulence within your framework? So... I sat in the sun, you know, rereading Interview with the Vampire. Last night I watched uh, a movie called Aranha. It was really, really good. I think that's what it was called. It was really, really, really good. And I drank some champagne that somebody had gifted me. And it was cool because I've been wanting champagne for a while. I really wanted to get a bottle of champagne to celebrate getting this apartment in April. <laughs> in April. And so I was recently gifted some because I couldn't afford to get a bottle of champagne lately. And that's okay. And anyway, anyway, I say all that to say... This feeling of opulence, of luxury, of wealth, it's not rooted in, in capitalism or rooted in like material desires explicitly. It's rooted in sensation. So some of the feelings for September is like, you know, red and black and velvet and soil and blood and hip openers, lots of hip openers, hip flexor, you know, stuff, lots of things for your thighs your trunk, your stomach, all of that shit. <clears throat> oh God, my apartment is so hot. It's so hot. There's no air here. Anyway, let's grab a three card reading uh, for September. So before you receive this message, before you receive any message, I like that. Before you receive this message, sit with your guides, sit with your spirit. Really not everything is for everyone. This is just a general what are some of the energies that are going to be present in September? So, Holy Creator, Most Loving, Blessed Dead, my loving Blessed Dead especially, and those only who are relevant to this moment, I ask that you protect me inside and out, front, back, left, right, side to side. Protect me in all realms, dimensions, timelines, and possible timelines, um, and all possible realities. And protect anyone viewing this. I ask Holy Creator for three cards. This deck is so happy to be used. Oh my God, this deck is so happy. Decks have their own, they have their own energy. I've been reading cards for so long. I think it's one of my favorite things. I think just the cards I love. All right, we're gonna take you. I'll draw the next two though. We have a lot of pentacles popping out. So remember when I said like, opulent and luxurious and I'm giving these underworld cues of velvet and stuff that doesn't have to be your color scheme opulence and luxurious to you might be you know mahogany and and forest green and emeralds and stuff same deal same energy family right um okay two more cards please and I I mentioned that again because the king of pentacles is one that flew out so we are headed into harvest season I will say, ooh, yes. So we're headed into harvest. This is all pentacles. We're headed into harvest season. Um, we're going to get a bonus card for it. We're headed into harvest season for the love of God. If you get a reading with me, this is what happens. And um, I will say that even though it's not spring, I want you guys to be thinking about planting. What are you planting in your heart, in your mind, in your thoughts, in your spirit? What is your will like right now? What is your relationship to your joy? Pentacles is not, let me take it back. Let's get to the roots. Let's get to the roots. A plant has to start from a seed. It has to grow deep roots. It doesn't just pop up. I mean, there are things that exist in shallow soil. There are things that just pop up, but you know what I mean. 
So when I see this King of Pentacles, this Ace of Pentacles, and this Three of Pentacles, because that's what came out. So we have our King, we have our Ace, and we have our Three. So there's a very obvious air to me of study. There's a very obvious air of potential, of potential opportunities, um, you know, potentials for money. That's great, whatever. But I think the potential to understand how to work with your resources. And again, resources are not just money. Um, what grows around you? I talk a lot about working with nature and I talk a lot about hoodoo because that's my main practice. What grows around you? What do you know how to make out of what? If I have, you know some old clothes that don't really fit but there's an elastic waistband on them and I have thread to sew and I have some other stuff I could make a skirt out of that I could tighten up that waistband and make a skirt is it going to be perfect no but can I practice yes that's the kind of thing I'm talking about how can you know can you work with cinnamon eight ways instead of trying to get eight different spices how are you using your resources to me with the king of pentacles coming out first uh especially as we're you know entering uh what mercury retrograde and mars being in gemini to me this feels like a revisitation of skills so coming back to something that you have previously done or previously started um revisiting something that you were curious about it really feels like a return to fundamentals in a space or being a student again and this is not starting from the beginning but again a return to being a student <clears throat> so <sighs> there's a reason i'm bringing up the mental but I'm going to save it for the last card. But there's a reason I'm bringing up the mental. And there's a reason I'm talking about things taking time to grow. So even though we're entering fall, it is still to me a planting and a planning season. Winter, things are dormant on the surface, but there's stuff that happens underneath, right? There, there are things that are still moving. <sighs> when stuff can't physically grow, when we can't make physical movements, we have to make mental, emotional, spiritual movements. This is a great time for reflection so that when spring comes, because you see this energy when spring comes, when we pass through that gateway, you want to be ready to move. You want to be ready to move. So to me in September, I see this. I think, what is your craft? What are you working on? Hone your skills. What I see in September is an energy full of possibility and full of opportunity, um, you know, in a broad sense. But it requires you to to know yourself, to not be afraid to revisit topics, to not be afraid to be, you know, new at something or imperfect at something, and instead to welcome this this path of study. What I really love, God, this is great. The Queen of Swords was the bottom card here, which I always read. Um, in this case, to me, again, that mental, that's why I was talking about it. You want to be able to make clear decisions. You don't want to move in fear. You don't want to be rushed into one thing or, you know, reacting somewhere. You want to be clear and responding. Now, if this was just a reading for myself, I would say this is advice as I, you know, round out this last year ahead of my Saturn return starting. Um, as I as I enter my own season of of rest and renewal, whatever. Fall and winter are really big for me. Uh, but but in a general sense, you cannot have wealth without clear thought and clarity. You cannot have success and balance without knowing yourself and having some clarity. The other thing that I really like here is that right underneath that Queen of Swords is the Queen of Wands. And she really is going to be our last card. Uh, but to me, to me, I'm just so happy because when you have your mind in order, and your body in order, when you're grounded, when you are grounded, when you are grounded, when you are firmly rooted in a practice, you know yourself and you're building, you're firmly rooted, you know your foundation, but you're also consistently making sure that foundation is healthy and stable, you are honing your craft, you are moving from a space of meditation, of clarity, of response, not reaction. When you are doing these things, you are able to stand fully in your spiritual power, your creative power, your joys, your desires, your passions. So we don't see water out here. There's a Knight of Cups that was under this, but it doesn't feel super, super relevant to me. Like I could read it, but it's not necessary. I could just keep pulling and reading. But, but the energy to me here, with this really being the final card, is saying, especially in September, Let's lean into the energy of fortifying our foundation, you know, 
clarifying our thought so that we can move forward really exercising our gifts. That's important. I think 2023 is going to be a really cool year for a lot of people. I typically do year ahead readings, um, you know, a limited number at the end of each year for the year coming up. And when I see this, again, I don't like collective messages. I don't like general messages. But when I see this, I think there is a, a field of opportunity. I mean, just like a, oh God, just like tulip, sunflower fields of opportunity. So much, so much, so much, so much, so much. But you're going to have to be grounded to get it. You're going to have to be, you always have to be grounded. We always need to be grounded. But the way the world is moving right now and the way spirit is moving and spirits are moving, there are so many variables, so many people, you know, opening up in new ways, yada, 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 that it's going to be really easy to miss something. You know what I mean? You want to get good at reading between the lines. I mentioned earlier, I'm rereading Interview with the Vampire. And I realized when I first read it, you know, in my earlier 20s, I, I devoured it. I sped through it. There are books that I just <laughs> totally like consumed. I consumed the sensation of them, the moment, the escape. Going back, there's a greater richness. Going back, there's more, you know, there's more to see there. Um, this is not a time that we are afforded the luxury of going back, like rereading a book. This is a time to, to really measure twice, cut once, ma'am. Measure twice, cut once. Be clear. Be clear. Really know your body. This grounding thing is important. This Mars and Gemini, which I haven't looked into a lot, and I am not a professional. I, I do astrology for myself and friends and family just for personal growth. But sorry, I'm like, what is that? What am I seeing? But the feeling that I really get with this, and this is something that I recognize for myself, having a lot of Mars placements, a lot of Mars energy, um, is that we really need our bodies to work with our minds. That And that is should be obvious at the beginning, right? But what I mean by that is our body helps our mind be grounded. Our body really helps our mind be grounded. In our body is a lot of our of our gifts. It's a lot of ancestral memory. It's a lot of, you know, emotion, trauma. Our body is receiving. Just it's not like our brain is the I mean, our brain is within the body receiving stuff, but but my hands register things differently than my eyes, differently than my nose, differently than my ears, similar but still differently than my feet. The right side of my body and the left side of my body feel differently. My body reminds me who I am sometimes when my brain is out there, you know, doing whatever. This is why when we're having anxiety attacks and panic attacks, we do grounding methods. What do I see? What do I taste? What do I hear? What, what can I touch? You know, whatever. Knowing the body is really, really, really important. The body is the mind. They are not separate. Your body, your mind, your spirit, this personal conglomeration of you, it, it is a whole, it's a system and there are pieces to it and the pieces all interact with one another, but it's a whole, right? So to me, this Mars and Gemini, especially with Mercury retrograding, I got to see what sign it's retrograding in, but especially with Mercury retrograding and do check, check your charts, please see where these things are happening. Like I know tropically Gemini is my eighth house. So Mars is about to be in my eighth house. I need to put some of my brain skills to work, potentially putting my brain skills to work to do what? Give me some money. Give me a little more money. Maybe give me some lasting money that can support me while I hone other skills, while I develop other crafts. So anyway, I really have to leave because <laughs> I'm supposed to go to a philosophy class with my boyfriend. Um, but yeah, I, yeah. I love you guys. I love you, God. I love you, spirits. Y'all ain't got to go home, but you can't stay here. Holy Creator, bless us, protect us. Thank you for blessing and protecting us. Thank you for opening us to the flow of miracles. Amen. I love you guys.